So what do we need for this project? Well, for this project you will need an oval base of one oh five by seventy. No trusty steel ruler. So basically I had a spare base of the correct size and I had a couple parts which I'll go through in a second and I couldn't get hold of the RAF axe uh, on the GW site currently as it stands now it is sold out and I wouldn't mind a judgment of corn um, just getting back into AOS uh, with the latest edition and everything I played demo uh, current games in Crediton in the UK if you ever anywhere near there please check them out it's a great store always support your local and I thought while well, I'm well back in I've got 3,000 points anyway but what's changed since I've played last so I played one game possibly in the last edition so I haven't played hardly any AOS at all since it came out but typical Ross I collected a load never played much but collected a load so I wanted a Judgment of Corn. Uh, basically, it's an endless spell, but without calling it a spell because Corn hates spells. So the rules are really nice. I've got parts that I believe I can make uh, the Rafax with, which are if you're a Corn player, you probably have a Bloodthirster. One of the Bloodthirsters, anyway. And it comes with several different options, one of which has an axe. And I thought that must be approximately the same size axe. Obviously, I haven't trimmed the little bits off the sprue yet. And the axe should be something like that. And then there is a curved wall, uh, which looks like some kind of flame. And inside, if you go on the GW site and spin the model around, you can see inside there are a few skulls. So it looked really plain from the outside, but if you look carefully you can see there are skulls and there is detail in it. So rather than just having an axe on a bit of wire or something and making it look a bit simple, I thought yeah, I would add some skulls and actually make it look as near as I can to the original piece. So it is a fantastic piece if you can get hold of it. Brilliant. It's not that expensive. But currently as it stands, I want to use one and I can get hold of one. So I've got bits I believe I can make a good effort. So I thought I would show you guys how I made mine. So for the skulls, one of the best basing kits ever, especially if you've got corn, world eaters and 40k, anything like that, this kit is amazing. So, so, so many skulls. What a great kit. So I'm going to pop out a load of human skulls or humanoid skulls to decorate the inside of this flame, this raffy looking flame. And what am I going to use? I'm going to use some green stuff to make it. So I don't want this thing to snap or break on me. So what I'm going to do is make some kind of armature, some kind of frame up first to make it a bit stronger. Then I'm going to wrap the green stuff around it. So that's the plan. Will it happen, or will I just have to set fire to it on camera in front of you guys? So that's the challenge I set for myself. Uh, it's not very expensive to buy, granted, and it certainly won't be very expensive to build. So if you do have a Bloodthirster, Axe is pretty handy. I had a spare base anyway, so this will cost me next to no money, because I already had the parts already. So here goes, step one, making the armature. So what do I mean by an armature? Well, you can make a wire frame up with paper clips or thick wire, anything one like that. And the reason I'm going for this kind of thing rather than sticking the green stuff directly to is because it gives the center um, a stronger backbone, I guess, and you're less likely to break the green stuff if you dropped it. So I've drilled a little hole, glued it through. So just gives me a little something for it to stick to. Now I could make another piece of frame there and there, uh, but in this case, I think one bit of wire is probably going to be enough. So I've carried it like so because the original box art for the original piece is that kind of shape. 
Now I'm going to make. Uh, <laughs> now I'm going to mix equal parts of green stuff together. So sometimes where the green stuff has the two colours touching, there is a bit of a hard section, so you might have to cut that out. But just keep mixing the green stuff together until you get a lovely solid green consistency. So not yellow, not blue. So I'll mix it a little bit more than that, and it's nice and soft to manipulate. So green stuff is ideal for this. Of course you could use mill putt or something like that. But green stuff I feel is fine. Mill putts. In my personal opinion, better for making a slip. Uh, it's also pretty good for sanding back. But green stuff is perfectly acceptable. And relatively inexpensive. It's fantastic stuff. So, mix it up a little bit. And what I'm going to aim for is to make the basic shape initially. So I'm going to make a triangular section. And just build it up a little. Make sure it's sticking on the wire. And I'm going to make it wider at the base than I am at the tip to give it strength. And plus, it kind of looks like that in the in the art. So I'm going to go for the basic shape first. Then I'm going to put another layer on top when it's fully hardened, because it's just easier to work with in two halves rather than making two sides initially, build it all the way up. Chance are it's gonna be soft, I'm gonna put a load of fingerprints in it, and then when I put the skulls in it, I'm probably gonna to push too hard and push against it. So it's nice to have a, a basic frame. So I'll do that a second. So applying the same rules, mixing up, and making a slightly wider base this side as well. Once it's funny hard, somebody jokes here. I'm then going to finish it off with another layer of green stuff, adding the skulls and the detail. So that's the basic framework. So it doesn't have to be beautiful, it doesn't have to be amazing. That's roughly the shape I want. I'm going to let it fully go off. And I'm going to apply the second layer. So now I don't have to push against something, it's soft and it's going to make a right mess. When it goes off fully hard, it's going to be fine. So while that's drying, and it's going to take a little while for that to dry and fully harden, I'm going to get on with the axe head. So the axe head, if you're using the same one as me, you'll find that it's missing half of the, the bottom of that part of the axe. So that's what it looks like one side. On the other side, it was missing that section. So from that rivet down, it's totally gone. So all I've done is the skulls from the skull kit. I've cut the back off and stuck one on there because my green stuff and skills are okay, but they're not as good as making a neat skull. And plus, you know, why would you put yourself through that if you already have a skull? And I've just filled in that section there. And notice there is a spike there, so I will probably cut that off. Or you can always add a spike on if you're really good at green stuff. Just worried it might snap off. So when this has gone off fully hard, I was thinking about drilling a hole in the end here and putting a paper clip. So when I eventually do attach it to this part, so it's going to be roughly there, I want to have it so it's not going to break off. So if I do drop it or anything, it's not just going to be green stuff, glued to green stuff. It's actually going to be pinned right through, less likely to knock off. At this stage, if you wanted to, you could always extend the handle once the paper clip is in there. When you pin it, make it a really long handle sticking through like that if you wanted to. But in the pictures, it's relatively short. So I might put a small section of green stuff around it, but it's not going to be a massive handle. I'm going to keep it as close as I can to the original piece. So, once that's drying, then we'll go back to the other stage, which is this. We're going to add the second layer now of green stuff to the main part of the base. So I've just mixed them now, two equal parts off camera. My wriggly worm of green stuff. So it's a nice consistency, so it looks pretty much like what you're seeing right now. Okay, so once it's fully mixed, 
looks a little something like that. So then we're going to start off with one side and just build it all the way up. So the same kind of shape as what I'm doing now. That kind of shape. Just keep it going all the way to the top. So all the way using the full paper clip. And the original piece curves back quite a lot. So I'm going to really make it having an arched back. So just like that, just a semicircle. So I'll keep manipulating it and playing around until I have something a little bit like I mean, something like that. So that's the rough shape. So after we stick the skulls in it and this thing goes off completely hard, then I'll start drilling the little holes in the side. And um, I'll repeat the same process with this side. So building it up, adding skulls, and adding the little bits of flames jutting out the back. But yeah, that's uh, it's starting to shape up quite nicely now. It's starting to get that bit of a curve to it. But it will really show up once the second bit of green stuff is added to this side. So I don't know if you want to use your hands or use tweezers. I'll use tweezers because it's funny to see these skulls pink off across the room and you'll never find them ever again, especially when on camera. So I'll grab my skulls. I've just got four skulls here from the skull pack. I've trimmed the backs of the heads, so you can see, or maybe not. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. So I've trimmed the back of the head off. So I will try to stick these. Do you know what? I'm going to use my hands because this is just going to fly across the flipping room. So in a random place, I'm just going to stick one skull there, just gently. Is me happy with that? Yes, I am. Then I'm going to push it in a bit further. So, excuse my grubby hands. I've just come back from my job, which is not in the food industry. It's definitely mechanics, so hence the oil. So there's one skull. And I'll just add a couple more around it, just dot it around in a random fashion. While the green stuff is still kind of sticky, because I want them to push in. Okay, Okay, so that's the basic structure done. So you can see inside there, kind of, some skulls have been pressed in while it's still wet. I have drilled a hole there as well for the axe. So that's the basic shape. Now you notice on the original piece there are flamey looking pieces here and there's a couple of flamey pieces on the spine and that's what I'm going to do next. So that's the basic shape. Obviously it's not mega mega smooth at the moment. And for the spines, yes you can do it from green stuff, um, but you know, it may break off. So you could always make the green stuff spines first. I say spines, the, the licks of flame. Um, and when they've fully gone off, you could always cut a little hole and glue them in place, which makes it stronger. Because if you make it directly from the green stuff, chances are it will get knocked and broken off at some stage. Um, I have tiny little pieces in my bits box that look kind of like flame. So I'm going to cut a hole and stick these in. And then put a bit of green stuff around just for strength. But yeah, you could use tiny little bits of wire. And then put the green stuff around as well. And that's totally fine. It gives it a nice solid um, structure. Nice stru uh, solid core. So it's less likely to get broken off. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill a couple of holes. Put those little spiky bits in and a little bit of green stuff over the top and then come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so what I've done is I've added a straw. I have straws of different gauges and thicknesses. Uh, add a little bit of green stuff on the end there, purely so it's tapered because the inside of the raf flame uh, is like a V. So I've tapered it slightly with a bit of green stuff and I've drilled it all the way through and put a paper clip in there for strength. So if it does accidentally get knocked sideways, then it's less likely to snap off. But yeah, extend the axe as long as you like. So how far you want it extending from the raft lane. Uh, I've not gone ridiculous with it, but I do want to see the detail of the axe sticking outside of the flame. So possibly a little bit more than the original, but that's just down my own personal preference. And you can always decorate the, the haft of the axe as well. So if you wanted to 
uh, put some green stuff around and uh, maybe put a knurled nut around it that's a nice effect or maybe some um, bandages kind of looking thing you know wrap that around not a problem but for me I'm just going to do a solid axe handle so there we go wait for that to dry so uh, I haven't glued the axe in but I just put it in to see what it looks like that's the kind of thing I'm getting at the moment with the flames on the back all the way up its spine but what am I missing this bit here is too smooth this needs to be flamed as well so I haven't stuck that in I've just placed it in because I want to paint that separately just makes life easier so what I'll do with this is I'll just start making some cuts that's right I'm using an old terrible knife and start cutting into the green stuff but obviously make sure a your knife is sharp and being the green stuff is fully gone off so what I'll do is make some incisions like V shape ish so down a little bit there um, so yeah like a V kind of like a triangle kind of just a cutout like so make it pretty random basically we want to make it look like flame so start making it ones like that and of course I could always sand it because it is green stuff being as careful as I can taking some notches out mm -mm 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 -mm. Like that, just a couple like that on each side. I'm going to sand them as well. Wiggly, 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 wiggly. Just a couple like that. Not too perfect. Just like that in a few places. And of course, you are going to be cutting probably towards yourself. So get an adult to help you or mind those fingers. I mean, me lopping my fingers off on camera probably would be good for the ratings. But um, I like my fingers, so sorry guys, I'm keeping them. So yeah, just keep making a few little notches like so. And when you're happy with the flames on the face of it, you notice in the the artwork for the model itself, there's a few little holes around here. So I like to use a drill, making sure there is no skull on the other side would be a good idea. Away the excess and just keep making random holes. So I'm going to put a couple of side by side, shake them a little bit. That kind of thing. Now I did the same thing with my my demon prince's wings when I was making one for Nurgle. Drilling some holes in, making it look a bit beaten. That was more of a moth-eating kind of feel. Or you see, trying to give the illusion of like a wraithy flame. Doing that, keep messing around, having fun. Right. So I started painting the axe, the, the head of the axe up, and it's drying right now. Had a few washes on it. Uh, I've done a bit of zenithal to this thing. Now, on the box art, it's 
mainly a grey, and then it goes to a traditional flaming colour. Uh, well, this is magic. You know, let's not beat around the bush. I know corn doesn't do magic, but it is magic. When you can summon an axe out of air, you know, that's that's magic, all right? I know you're probably upsetting a lot of corn people now, Ross, but, you know, it is. A judgment is magic. So this wraithful axe is basically splitting open a gateway. It's wreathed in magical flame. So you can paint it standard flamey colors, or you can go a little bit crazy and add some fluorescent greens. That's what I'm gonna do. So I am going to now put a little bit of that in my bowl. So what I'm personally using is some Vallejo. This is fairly fluorescent, this green. So I'm going to mix a little bit in my bowl. And just cover it lightly. dry I will paint the skulls up as well. I could paint the skulls as a ghostly apparition kind of thing but I'm just going to paint them up as a regular skull. But you know feel free to paint them however you want. This is just my own interpretation of this. And just like so. Now, yes, I've got a little bit on the base, but I don't care. I think the overspray looks good. Making it pop just a little bit more. So once this is dry, I will make the skulls stand out a little bit more, and I'll make the flame stand out a bit more along the edges. I'm going to make it brighter. Okay, so I'm calling this thing done. Um, so I've painted it in a, a little bit of a, a crazy, bright, um, ghostly flame. Uh, but you can paint it with traditional flame colours. You can see the skulls in there. Just in there, like so. And of course, it wouldn't be a corn axe without a little bit of blood. So I put a bit of blood for the blood god on a sponge and just sponged it on. But it's a very basic painting. It hasn't taken me very long at all. Um, it was over a week, but only a couple of hours every night for a week. Because it's always nice to let the green stuff cure a little bit before working with the next stage. Because you put disgusting fun prints in it and all sorts. So it's just me experimenting uh, with a base that I already had, with an axe I already had, and a little bit of green stuff. So, of course, I had a couple of little tufts of grass there as well. Classic tufts of grass. But this is it. This is the Wraith Axe, one of the corn judgments. And, uh, yeah, I personally couldn't get one uh, for love and money at the moment. So I made my own. So I hope you enjoy this video guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit that like button if you haven't done already and please, please, please subscribe and click on that bell for those notifications. Thank you very much. Catch you next time.